This episode is brought to you by Black Oak TV. Black Oak TV is a Black-owned streaming service exclusively focused on Black content. There's new content every single week, and you can sign up at blackoak.tv for $6.99 per month. That's right, and you can get 15% off of your first month with the code THICKTHREADS. The season premiere of The Closet Bitch, starring Shayna Solomon, drops November 18th. And you can catch the season finale of My Roommate Pays All the Bills on Thanksgiving weekend. Leather today. Leather, I came ready to spank some. I was about to say, it looked like, <laughs> looked like you got a nigga tied up at home yeah, or something. in my basement. A little Just New Jack City type shit, yeah. BDSM, you mm-hmm. ever did that? Uh, you ever walk on his chest with heels on? No, no. I feel like you would be doing that. No, not with heels on. I'd be too scared. I'm, I'm kind of heavy. I'm too. Now I'm like 219 pounds because I lost like four pounds. So I can't imagine standing on a nigga's chest with some stilettos. Be a crazy way to die. Unless he was just like a huge dude. Right, right, right. Or fat. He had a lot of a lot of chest. And would then I'll have to be focused on my balance. Would you ever have a sex dungeon? Yes. What would be in it? Um the little what is it called? It looks like an X, right? When you it's a, you get Oh, up. like the the medieval shit that be stretching niggas? <clears throat> Not like and a... And you'd be like... No! With the hood on? No! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, you know, I'd tie him up. Or he could tie me up like that. And then... I'm not really ticklish, but I think people do that and be like tickling people and stuff. But if somebody is ticklish, mm-hmm. I'd probably be like tickle them and stuff just to see him squirm. Tickler. Okay, that's that's doable. Um, I would have all of the array of whips and handcuffs, uh, paddles. fuzzy handcuffs. Mm-hmm. Um, handcuffs, of course. I I want to have a huge bed. That's it. Like a huge bed. Even though I'm not really into the like multiple person sex. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not What's the me. point of having a dungeon? Have a damn cubicle. <laughs> have a sex cubicle. Oh, so the reason you have a sex dungeon is so you can have a lot of people in no, there. I don't know. Oh, because for me, I just want to be adventurous with the person that I'm with. And so we just have all of... You know what I do want? I hope my mom never watches this. Um, it's too late. We here. What's up, mama? It's like... <laughs> it's like... This is so crazy. It's like a bike that when you slide up, the dick comes up. So oh, comes shit. Up. And you're just going to be biking around the dungeon. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you just slide up and it's like a it's like a seesaw almost. Like, you know, that and then one of those masks with the dick on it. So like, it wow, wait, up. hang on. What? Yeah, like the, the mask. With dick the mask? Dick. Uh-huh. With it, you keep doing it right here. Is it a dick nose? I think it's right here. I, right here. In my mind, I, th- I thought of. I the, think they have to the, hold it with their teeth. The like, old doctor mask that has the curved beak. But except this down. is just this is just a dick with a mushroom tip. <laughs> and the I've point seen is, it. To I've seen it on some videos. Like you write it on their face. So the the man puts the dick mask on, <laughs> and then the woman rides their face. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can get with the dick nose. I know. I've never done it. That's I've like never but I've never tried to under, convince any You might as well say you uh you wore a strap on and smashed a girl. That's basically really, wearing a strap. Well yeah, I don't really want to do that. Um but the mask, you know, it was crazy because this is kinky. Maybe it's because it's this this late. Okay, so I saw a video where she was just kind of like humiliating him and calling him like names little and dick stuff. Motherfucker. And she put the mask on him. She was like, I'm not fucking your little dick. I'm fucking this mask. It's bigger than you. And he was just turned on. He was like, Don't and she that. just wrote the mask. And I was like, the embarrassment. This is kind of lit. Like, I was embarrassed for myself for watching it. 
But then I was even more embarrassed with being low key kind of turned on. I wish I would get turned on from being humiliated. I'd be like, fuck you. (laughs) I'd be saying shit back. Hey, hey, don't talk about my dick like that. (laughs) I'd be like, but I'm sure he was, I'm sure that's what he likes. There's a lot of guys that are into being humiliated. I don't know what that is. I don't want, I don't want to be dealing with a guy and he's like, I'm not eating your pussy. That shit stinks. (laughs) Make fun of my dick. Right. Make fun of my pussy. Yo, pussy's loose and and funky and oh, making fun of walk. a pussy is totally different. Right? Like, I, damn, he rude as hell. Like, well. don't, 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 don't do me like that. But I think, from what I've seen, the humi- the humiliation for women is is worse. That's a thing. Women getting humiliated. Mm-hmm. I've never. I mean, I've never. Really, I don't really. Want. What do you type in? Humiliation in porn? Uh, yeah, you can type in humiliation. Uh-huh. That's wild. Um, so what I've seen is like uh, them on their knees uh, with a collar around their neck, a leash. Um, they made them lick toilets and the floor and the shoes. And then they and then they get <clears throat> invoiced. That's crazy to me. They pay mm-hmm. money. They pay money for that. You think yeah, they write it off? And you call them sluts and hoes and bitches and you whores. Business sluts, men really can write sluts it and off. Whores. Probably, absolutely. They're just like I was stressed out. I if needed to be video. called a, a, a dog and lick a few toilets. If it's on video, but you know, I really think they clean that stuff like really, really good before they do it. So it's just like the simulation. So yeah, so it's just the thought of because most of the time when you think about a toilet, you think disgusting, which they are. I Even don't. if you clean it, as you can clean it with with Mother Teresa's rag, and it still will not be enough for me. I feel to... like I've only dipped my toes in the BDSM oh, world. What have you done? Nothing crazy, just the, the handcuffs, well, the whips. What's the toe? Give the me the middle up. toe. What? <laughs> you said I dip my toes in it. <laughs> give said, me well, the give, middle toe? <laughs> give me the middle toe. What would you, is that what would share? You do? Is that mean share? <laughs> yes. Um in college I got the the whip with the little the Jesus whip, the one that has all the little tassels on it. Mm-hmm. Um I used that. Um, you know, blindfold, handcuff, okay. tying, tying up. Uh, okay. Tying up, you were tied, or you tied them up. Uh, there was a couple times I was tied, a couple times they were tied. You know, um, I've never been tied up. What else is considered? I mean, I guess that's that's it. Spankings. I, I've never gotten the spankings. I don't. I don't want that. Uh, but in terms of like actual, like yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those are the, that's just the toe dip. Dang, I don't uh, even gag. Think gag? Have used the gag. I haven't been gagged, but. They were gag, ball, ball gag. Uh, and they just like, just like, I guess them wearing like hey, latex out here. and shit. You're talking about dip my toes in. You that is dipping like my toes in. your five toes in. BDSM goes real, I mean, I feel like it goes all the way up to where you zip your face up and you're just in all <laughs> latex and you can't breathe and shit. I did, like, a, I did a photo shoot like that. What, with the full body face? And were you like doing something? Just posing. With the, but just like real, like latex doesn't do it for me. It just, I wasn't in latex. Feel. I was in spandex. It reminds me of uh, American Horror Story. Yes, I did look like the guy from American Horror Story, that except with, titties. with titties. Yeah, <laughs> and I had on heels and I had on jewels though, so it wasn't all just like it was completely covered. But I had on jewels. I had on rings. You know, you just, you just couldn't see my skin. Um, and it was like but gris- I haven't done. I, I don't. Th- I don't even think. So as far as actual physical sexual activity, <laughs> I don't think I've done really anything. I've never been blindfolded. Really, I haven't been in handcuffs. I've never been spanked with an object. You've been slapped. I've been slapped. I've slapped the shit out of a girl, but <laughs> only because she really, really like wanted me to, and I, I was like. Uh, yeah. You know, you have to warm yeah. up to it. Cause I'm like, I was, uh, I was trained not to do this. <laughs> I've been slapped, but I've never been slapped hard. Hmm. Um, I don't think. Where I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> tooth comes out. Like, oh. <laughs> right. Do, I've never been again. punched. I've never been. Oh, she's no. Yeah, you can't um, punch it. I yeah. I don't. I guess I'm. I haven't experienced anything, boy. 
I mean, like I said, I, I never even used a butt plug or nothing. You look like you use niggas as furniture. You know those like scenarios where some dude just comes over and they're like, "It's six o'clock. I'll be your chair for twenty." Well, I've had hours. requests. Guys have requested to be my lamp. I think I told you that before. Hilarious to and be they a just lamp in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crazy How do they movie. clock out? Are they just like, do they take the shade off? I don't know. Like, right, and they tell me to take, they want to be my like financial slave. So they want to sit as a lamp and they want to pay me, like they want to give me their checks and I give them an allowance. Oh, thank God it. I didn't get that fetish. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Can you imagine if you found out that that made you hard? Ooh. I got a cash app to get hard. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Man, so, uh, but I'm 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 willing to to delve a little into it. I kind of I like being uh, shit talked to. Okay, I like aggression, you know. So, but I haven't had anything outside of like, I think the normal, you know. I've never even had anal sex. I don't know if that, if that count as, I guess that would count as BDSM. That is punishment. <laughs> 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 the Punisher. I've I, never experienced I'm, any of that stuff. I, I'm, I'm I mean, good. But with, I have a great I'm good time. with the pee hole. The a hole. The pee hole. Yeah, I'm good with. Oh, I guess not penis oh. hole, but pussy hole. I'm good. Uh, the a hole no, is just. I it's, thought pee is in okay. urine. The pee hole. Well, it's that too. Have you ever been peed on? No. Oh. Well, I'm one of those pe- oh, people God. that think that squirt is pee. I knew you were gonna say that because it smells like pee. <laughs> Afterwards, you get squirted on and you stand up and you're like, I I smell a little pee. Okay, so it's I know what you're talking about. It's not smell, but it's there. I know what you're talking Scientists about. Scientists have confirmed it. But it's... It's mixed with other me, stuff, yes, but yes. it's still pee. If I, if I mixed, if I made a bomb-ass smoothie with all these nice fruits and put a little shit in it. A little you, shit? A little shit in it. And then I gave it to you. Yeah. No, no, no. Hear me out. It was, it was, oh, a, it was, a, out. it was a smoothie. It had bananas and berries and protein and all the and nutrients boo-boo. and stuff. And then just a little shit in it. A little dookie. <laughs> a little shit in it. But it was enough where when I put the cup in front of you, somebody's you, gonna get sick. You smelled some shit. And you're like, it smells like shit. And I was like, don't worry. There's a lot of other stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about something you drink. But I'm just saying, no. that's still a shit smoothie. So are you saying you drink, you've drunk squirt before? Never. But I'm just saying, if I Would can you? pick up notes of urine. <laughs> no, I didn't say no. Would you? No, no. But oh. if I would pick, I'm I'm trying to tell you that I think it's pee. So of course <laughs> I wouldn't drink it. Well, that's not enough, of course, because as you no. know, people like I'm okay to with the pee on. play. I'm okay with the poo play. Can I tell a quick story? Why am I always talking into... about poo play? On I know. Thing? I'm saying Podcast. I think you're really into it. The two girls, one cup. Two girls, one pat. Mm-hmm. But we talking about poop. Are both pooping on me? Two, yep. Yeah. In your mouth. I want a, I want a sex dungeon. Oh. But I want a really like emotional, emotional. roller coaster. Like, I want it to, okay, you want to hear my, I just thought of it just now, but you want to hear my ideal sex dungeon? For sure. Okay. I would like nothing less than to hear this information. So when you hear sex dungeon, you just think of a regular room with swings and stuff like that. I don't think of no regular room. I be thinking of bricks and shit. <laughs> like well, that's the thing. Like with the stones and sinister. stuff. So here we yeah. go. Girl at the house. Hey, I have a sex dungeon. What? She's thinking... All these crazy modern Scenario. things. Scenario. Okay. I'm like, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see it. And she's like, where is it? And I'm like, it's down, you know, down in the, below the house. She's like, oh, it's really like dungeon. In the crawl space? No. no. Then I open the door <laughs> and it's like, like, like you said, like castle, like stone staircase going down. So it's looking I like Silence a, of the Lambs. I light a fucking torch on the wall. And like, and I'm like, come with me. And she's like, oh shit, this is like a real dungeon. That looks like Silence of the Lambs and right I'm, now. It sounds like I'm going down the stairs. There's like dripping and chains and rats and like rats. Yeah, and and she's like, holy shit, this is a real dungeon. My demeanor changes. I'm like, come with me. And like, this is horrible. There's it's like you know skeletons on the wall, like chained up, like they were left there. And then at the bottom is like this big Assassin's Creed looking wooden door. And I'm like, are you ready for, I don't know, You pleasure? sound like Quasimodo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to start r- walking with the limp right? and stuff. One eye open. And then That's I open right. it. And then it's like this bomb-ass regular sex dungeon. 
it, it was Regular. just just the staircase was all castle. So she was like, oh shit, it was a joke. And I'm like, yeah, I was just fucking with you. To give them that quick sense of like, oh shit, this is a I, real dungeon. I don't know if but I'd then, make it there. No, but that's what I'm saying. You got to be a rider. And then, because it's safe, you know what I mean? You know it's safe. And then you open it. But here's the thing. There's a big ass bed with golden sheets. I'm talking like, think of a king bed and like 50 of them. Big ass one. But to get there. A king bed, but 50 of them? Like, like that's the size. Giant ass bed, you know. But it's like a hundred yards across the room in front of you, ball pit. A ball pit? A ball pit. So now you just went through these dungeon stuff and now you're like seeing all these bright colors and like all this rich shit and you're like, oh shit. Ball pit. J- dive in. Get there, get there, get there. Then bouncy house. The trampolines and stuff. You you're bounce, 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 bounce. Then you get to the, uh, no, but there's like, there's like, Little butlers with Gatorade and shit and five hour so energies. So there's people that get to watch this behavior. Mm-hmm. Wow. So you're into voyeurism too. Snack tables, charcuterie boards. But I do, I would want mine to look more like a like an ancient Egyptian, like Anubis. Uh, what if it no, was just a big no, ass black cat? Not Anubis. You wouldn't no. want black because you know, Anubis will probably give some crazy God level penis. I, I, I don't course. want Anubis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that out of your head right now. He'll give you that tuck. But no, I want like just like columns and like you said, gold columns. Gold like these beautiful No like, ball pit. Thick, no, I don't want a ball pit. What about a zip line? I don't know what I would do with a zip line. What in, if you were my... what if you were at the bottom, legs open? And he was naked, and he. I'm trying to. He ziplined in. I'm trying into to the figure pussy. out what part of your brain you're looking into no, right now. Imagine, you're looking at me right now, but I'm trying to figure out where in your brain you're looking to come up. I with am imagining this. legs open, dude with the zipline insertion. Ah, that'd be fire. It sounds painful because you'd have to have an extremely amazing. Aim. aim right no it'd to, be scientifically like and then it i don't out. i don't know if it necessarily sounds like it would feel good for the woman you gotta do to the right receive math. that kind of force you so are you saying right it would have like some sort of break break feature before it gets to the end so you can slowly it's not really, ease it's in? not really thought out it doesn't sound like but it's thought out it but a, it a sounds like line. jesus christ <laughs> call it a, a dick zip <laughs> <laughs> Mine would be called a tit line. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, and you end up between the boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Enough debauchery. What? What? Oh, and mine would for sure have a jacuzzi in it. Uh, it would have, or what do they call them? Like baths. It would have like a jaboobsy. <sighs> <laughs> Let's get into some threads. Let's get into some threadage. What? Yes. Uh, what 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 you bringing? So I got from one from a guy named Big Mike. Okay. And he has Big Mike talking about side chick contract. Big Mike's ten rules for the other woman. So side chick contract. Uh huh. Okay. This might uh, this might be very informative. <laughs> this might be better. I didn't know there was rules, but let's learn the rules. Uh, mine is very uh. Mine's very PBS, oh. but it's, it, it's, it's, I like it. This is a uh, kids are not from earth. Uh, it's a thread of things that like regular things that kids like remixed. Um, <laughs> and honestly, their versions make a lot more sense than ours. Ooh, nice. So basically, kids sometimes are not simplicity from earth. wins. Hey, sometimes, yeah, you, you, you can have somebody explain a concept to you and you can be like, yeah, that's that's you're you you actually understand it better than us, <laughs> right? <laughs> like I feel like kids sometimes they break stuff down and you're just like, damn, you go to your room. They know when we lie <laughs> because the lies don't even like make sense. Remember when you were a kid, you thought that adults knew everything. Yeah, and then you became That's an true. adult and you're like, damn, I was like, I don't know shit. <laughs> like, damn, answer the fucking question. I don't know. Oh, I want to hear yours first. You want to hear mine? Mm-hmm. Okay. Are we speaking to your side chicks? Side chicks, listen up. Side chicks, listen up. (laughs) All right. 
Have you ever had a side chick? Yeah. Uh, not really. Not really. But yeah. Well, no, I, not really. Were you in a say. relationship mm-hmm. and had a woman on the side? Not consistently, no. Okay. Well, I'm not saying mistress. I feel like side like, chicks are like... They come and go. Like, they're like there, they know about the situation, and they're just like, okay, I'll do my... You know what I mean? Yep. I've, not, I, I don't, I've never had that. Oh. All right. The side chick contract. Big Mike's 10 rules for the other woman. Number one. You are the other woman. This does not mean that you are the only other woman. Oh. Act accordingly. Yeah, that's rule one. Start that hot. is rule one out the gates. Seems like a pretty the solid horse rule. race is beginning. Know what it is. With a bang. Mm-hmm. Two. Please focus on the stolen moments that we spend together. <laughs> <laughs> You can call them stolen, stolen moments. moments right? Do not concern yourself with my whereabouts when we are apart. Frankly speaking, my life outside of our time together is not your concern. Okay. This is a tough guy. Three, be comfortable with who you are to me. Do not mention my wife and or main woman as she is not your concern. Oh, this nigga married. In caps, do not compare yourself to my main chick in any way and do not attempt to contact her. To do so would be a breach of our contract. So Num- no contact. No contact. Okay. Uh, and <laughs> to be honest with you, it seems like even when they do, they still go back to her. Still go back to who? The side chick. Number four. When they do what? Breach? Break the contract. Because uh, mm-hmm. sometimes I feel like sometimes I feel like it's a test to see like what your main woman is gonna do. Like, is she gonna leave? Probably not. most of the time she doesn't. So he's like, ah, she stayed. Just want to feel it out. She already knows about this. She stayed. Mm-hmm. That's the you know, that's the tryouts. And I think it depends on how good the other situation, the side situation is. Mm-hmm. Because if it's a a lituation, whenever they together, I think it's hard for him to give up, even if she break the rules. That's why he's coming up with the rules, because, I mean, these happen all the time. Okay. Number four. Okay. Anticipate frequent changes in our plans. <laughs> <laughs> Anticipate frequent changes. I like that one. For the most part, a spur-of-the-moment escape is the best I can do. I like those. Number five. Spur-of-the-moment, just, I think he calls them escapes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he means escapes from his situation. Uh Uh-huh. A spur-of-the-moment escape is the best I can do. So basically, bitch, we're not traveling together. And if if, if we do, it's it's because I'm going somewhere without my main. Mm-hmm. So be ready or don't. <clears throat> Frequent Have a bag changes pack. it. Yeah. <laughs> Chances are we not spending the night together. Mm. Um, I mean, this nigga's talking from a married point of view. <laughs> yeah. Number five. You must understand that maintaining a positive vibe while we are in each other's company is vital to the success of our situationship. Okay. No bickering or nagging about promises that I didn't keep. So he could just be trash. Just, she can't just, say nothing about just, it. Just, the contract is basically just saying it is what it is. It just really doesn't Sign sound here. like it. He it doesn't sound like a fun time for the woman with him. Well, I mean, I feel you can't. You don't think you can have fun under these rules? I mean, nigga, if you kept if you said you was gonna do something and I bring it up, like nigga, you didn't do it. So explain. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't explain it, then. You know, so you just kinda, don't like that last rule. Um, I'm not a fan of spur of the moment escape. Okay, I'll be needing time. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Um, number six, we are secret lovers. We can't blast our situationship to the world. Please don't tag me on social media. <laughs> 
And don't send me invitations to your work slash family functions or events. Major holidays, more likely than not, will be missed. So basically, he's saying February 15th, Valentine's Day. I mean, he's probably saying Thanksgiving and... I know, but I, I, I mentioned Valentine's Day because it's like, you know... It's a right. lover's lover's holiday. But I think I think overall they're like these are tent pole things, like even Fourth right. of July. You but know? that's where some of the bitterness comes in. Yeah, you know? I mean Unless I think that's where all the overstepping comes. Yeah. Unless she has somebody that she's dealing with more than him. But I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this once we've done with these. Because there's there's more to that type of story. Okay. Um number seven. No discussions about where this situationship is headed. <laughs> it's a good one. Where are, uh, wait, we are where we will be together in this moment. Enjoy it. Good one. Number eight. Yes, I am still sleeping with my significant other. Again, focus on our time together. <laughs> and focus. <laughs> and not what I do while we are apart. Okay. Damn, these two are long. Number nine. I am not interested in bringing a child into our situation. By the way, an unplanned pregnancy will not force a relationship commitment of any kind from me. It's a good one. Nor will it guarantee a promotion to main chick status for you. It's a good one. This is a clause in the contract. This you is, are loving this a little this much. Is a, this, this is the disclaimer at the end, right before you sign. Like, by the way, a baby won't keep me. <laughs> Don't right. even try it. <laughs> so this means you're fucking raw. So my uh, my guy, if you uh, if you even have to put this clause in there, that means you smacking raw. Or I mean, if if they get jealous enough, they could sabotage a condom too. For him to put this in here. It sounds like he's smacking raw. If you're going to have a consistent side chick. No, I just, I know he's, he seems like he's covering everything. Yeah, he's he's covering all bases. bases. Mm -hmm. Number 10. There are no guarantees about the outcome of our situationship, except one. I am a cheater at heart. And that (laughs) won't change unless I want it to. Until that happens, if you are promoted to the main chick, please know that yet another side chick will fill the vacancy oh my God. that you've left behind. This nigga is uh, uh well, I mean, scoundrel. It's, it's only uphill from here. If you sign to this, he can only surprise you. Signed he can only no woman. He could he could he could end up impressing. I'm gonna tell you this. This doesn't sound like there's nothing enticing about this. It's like, have you been on the internet? You've never read a, uh, a situation where you're like, how did, how did it get? How did it get here? Right. I don't right. put anything past anybody. So, these are the type of guys that will say all this stuff and get mad when finding out she has a man or mm. somebody else in the picture or. When she actually goes along with these rules, because I feel like when it comes to some like, well, maybe some relationships that are like some situationships that have longevity with them. I feel like there's there is more of like an emotional aspect, especially if the guy's married with kids and, you know, the home life is real like chaotic or whatnot. You don't get a lot of time to spend you know, with your wife or your significant other at home because the kids are there and everything. And then when you go to the side chick, it's like, <sighs> ain't no kids there. You right. know, ain't no... That's uh, what he meant by escape. Come, yeah. Right. You come, she might have on some sexy lingerie and a plate made for you, mm-hmm. you know. So he's talking like he's a fucking robot to where he just won't have any type of emotions for this woman. Niggas love their side chicks. Mm. Like, on some real shit. Yeah. Right? Like, niggas will fly their side chicks places, you know, put them on vacation. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they spoil could have a, them. It could be fun, you know? Well, the thing is, you have to have something that you bring it to the table, too. If you don't have time, then, nigga, what else are you outside of sex? Like, what else are you... I'm your break, but you're like... What? 
Like, he has to be bringing something to the table that makes a person even want to be a side Well, chick. from that contract, it seems like the best case situation for this is for both of them to be in a situation or married and finding an escape in each other. And by no way will a woman get promoted to main chick by following those rules. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The best case <laughs> scenario is... is, is uh, a woman who doesn't want to. Maybe right. they have their own situation and they're both taking a break. It seems like, like I, I didn't really learn about this stuff officially until I went to Hollywood because I didn't have really married friends like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of situations that I've seen, because I do know people that are married or people in relationships that have had sides. And honestly, it seems like they have more fun with the sides. They have a serious emotional attachment <clears throat> to their side chick or side wow. dude. Yeah, it's not just like, oh, we're fucking. But if, if I'm your escape, like, think about an escape, the concept of an escape. What does right. it bring to you, right? Especially a, consi- a consistent one, yeah. Right. I love escapes. I am in love with escapes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, if I can get out and get somewhere and just relax my mind and have fun and bust nuts and, you know, drink and, <laughs> and be bust fed. Nuts. and You know, it, it's, this is where my emotions are going to start to get attached to that. Have you ever been a side chick? <laughs> I, think, I think we were all waiting for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm... All right, commercial time. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Black Oak TV. Now, Black Oak TV is a black-owned streaming service that exclusively focuses on black content. There's new content every single week, and you can sign up at blackoak.tv for $6.99 per month. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. You can get 15% off your first month with code Thick Threads. The season premiere of The Closet Bitch starring Shayna Solomon drops November 18th, and you can catch the season finale of My Roommate Pays All the Bills on Thanksgiving weekend. And you know, I actually played in that. Okay. Were you the freeloader? (laughs) Um, I wasn't the freeloader, but I dated his roommate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you you was right there in all the action. Mm -hmm. I was in it. So y'all should definitely go check it out. Stay tuned to see if they actually pay the bills. Hey. (laughs) Have you ever been a side chick? (laughs) I think think we were all waiting for it. (laughs) I'm, I'm, I'm. No. Well, why the hesitation? I've been a mistress. What is the difference to you? I think a mistress is like you were pretty much in a relationship. Like it ain't no situationship. Like he was calling me his girlfriend, you know? Like it wasn't no. Uh, so a side, side chick, chick is a sneaky link. Right. And a mistress is I think a you girlfriend. Have a full on, the side. on relationship. Uh-huh. Now, was this someone who had a main girlfriend or a wife? Wait, you sound like you sound like the ops right now. Sound you know like what I'm I saying? mean, you brought this thread to the table. I think it's only fair. <laughs> they were in pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty serious. Like yeah. she had a ring on her finger. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. married. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. You it give. wasn't a it wasn't a relationship that started after marriage. It was a relationship that started before. So you, way you were, before. So you were with him while when he got married. No, we were on a break. And then you went back, or one of y'all yeah. went back. Well, he came back to me, but so I had left it. And then he got married. So it was like we had some years in the bag already and then went our separate ways. And then he pulled, he spent the block, pulled back up on me afterwards. And I shouldn't have, I feel really bad about the situation. Like, and honestly, I was very young. I was very young and it. How young were you? I'm not going into, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not going into that, but it was a situation that was nice for me. I did not want to replace her. I did not. I, I. It was actually easy for me to follow those rules because I, I actually did. You did follow not those rules? I did. Those all those all ten of those. Mm-hmm. 
But what I noticed in that situation was he he felt very strongly about me. When I say very strongly, I tried to cut the relationship off several times. Like several times because I just didn't feel right about it. It was like, but I did have I did have emotions towards him, but it just wasn't to the point where where I wanted to replace anything or nothing like that. Because I was still <clears throat> trying to I was still trying to date myself so I could replace that situation completely. <clears throat> you know? Quick so question. he didn't want me to be with anybody else. He didn't want me to get a main. He told me if I got if I got a main, he was gonna be like pissed off and that I could never That's ever audacity. he told me yeah he told me I could never ever move on from him <laughs> and that it was he was Damn. he was it for me and I was like yo like you better not get a boyfriend hang on my wife's coming <laughs> right that was exactly what it was and I'm like do you hear yourself like and I'm abiding by these rules and you're telling me like you want me to literally and I mean he offered a lot a lot but I still ended up leaving because I just, I didn't feel right. And honestly, I'm not glad I went through it, but it it made me never, ever, ever want to deal with that type of situation so again. So quick, quick question and be honest. I don't like your face right now. Is that the only time you dealt with a married man? Yes. Is that the only time you were a side chick? Yes. It's the only time. You give. Don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> I'm about to take it the wrong way, Pat. You give home record vibes. <laughs> you just do. <laughs> you give like seductress. I I am. I mean, gets my off brand from is... having a little secret. You no, know. my my brand is very seductive, seductress. But, but it's very just first like off, showing up at the wedding like mm -hmm. ooh, no. No, because I don't. Villainous. I don't no. It might be the it might be the leather today. I think it's the leather and the black hair. You're probably not used to black hair. I got on some bigger lashes today. You know, they're really like fluttering. So maybe I have a more seductive look today. So you're getting that vibe. But and then you said homewrecker. We've already talked about the term homewrecker. <laughs> But it's it's like Black Widow vibes, but like instead of coming but through no, to steal the codes, I, it's I like don't. to steal a nigga no. from his wife. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. I learned, like I said, I was very young. Um, yes, the situation was beneficial for me. There was a lot that I was provided. And um, like I said, I was I looked for ways constantly to break it off, but <laughs> It was like, okay, it was like I was in the dating pool, right? The trash-ass dating pool. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I was going out on dates with other guys, and I was really trying to focus on my love life as far as, like, finding that person for me and, you know, actually getting into a fulfilling relationship. And I did. I did get into a relationship, and when I did, I stopped dealing with him um but it was like it was it's crazy because he was the most consistent guy in my life the married guy yes he was Hilarious. more consistent he was more consistent than he had a whole family to th than the guys with. that were yeah. right so so for me it was like fuck like i i'm i'm dating i'm trying to date and i there there's like I had a couple of people that, that piqued my interest that I was like, oh, yeah, like, this is really good. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I could dip off from this. Like, and then the single guys start acting kind of funny. Mm -hmm. And here you have, while, while your little feelings are being hurt from the the dating situation you got going on, then you got here talking about I love you and you ain't never going nowhere and, you my bitch, basically. Like, you know, I mean, and what's a like, wife? <laughs> <laughs> and what's it's a like wife? in oh, those in those in moments, it was like in those moments, it was like what you wanted to hear from right. someone. Not necessarily from him, but you just wanted to feel something from someone. I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. Absolutely. I know I, I'm I'm but that's and, and I, I, I not always following told him. the contract. You know, uh, that sounds like you know He didn't feelings. follow Look, yeah, he wasn't kept, he wasn't following. He that wasn't. Either. I followed the contract, right? But me following, I'm telling you, he's talking this contract. But <laughs> if the woman actually followed that contract, he's gonna fall for her. He's gonna fall for her. 
while he oh, talking like all because, this big shit. Because he's she's gonna act like she don't care. Right. Yep. And it's like, how you gonna fuck with me like that? I'm fucking you like, you know, you you dealing with me and you know That's fair. And you 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 don't feel for me. Like what? Like they literally want their side chicks to feel for them, but just the I think the only thing that rings really true in this contract is they don't want you to reach out to the wife. Yeah, I think that's, that seems like a that a probably conflict should've. of interest. Yeah, but yeah. the whole bringing up kids and stuff like that. Well, I mean, because even if the the because that contract doesn't imply that the wife doesn't know, you know. Right. Apparently, a lot of these situations, it's like the wife knows and they're they're cool with it. But a big thing about men and women is that their main rule is like just don't embarrass me, don't make it nobody in my immediate mm-hmm. circle, all that stuff. So I feel like reaching out to them. And and being in contact, like I've 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 seen a bunch of open marriages mm-hmm. have arguments just because it was like some 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 secret stuff around somebody that was around them or something. Right. So I think so, that the main thing is uh Have you ever been a side dude? Um That's the that's the thing. Until I was just like, in my mind, grown, which was a long time after most people consider themselves grown. <laughs> um, and I would just like, man, fuck it, I'm just going to be honest. Uh, it wasn't, ne- it was never that level of maturity of like, one of us saying like, I'm in a situation and I just want to, you know what I mean? Right. It was always like, either sneaking and, and yeah, uh-huh. I've like, I've been with women who's had who've had boyfriends, but it's like, a but it wasn't a consistent relationship consistent thing where had. I know the do, you know what I mean like I I've never really done that and I've never been a part of that. I am however looking forward to being the side nigga of like some old ass heiress. What? You know what I mean? Like some some heir to so some you're trying fortune. trying to be a sugar baby? You know those like live-ins? You're trying to be a sugar baby. Where it's like a old like let's say it was like some old hotel heiress, you know. Or like wow. some, you know, some oil heiress, and her dude is like, like super into like so, black culture, but also can't really perform like that. So he he like knows me, and I like I know him. Like, hey, what up, Arch- Arch- Archibald or whatever his name wow. is. And then I'm just like, I have a little guest house, and I'm just pipe, 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 put in the will. Shut the fuck up, Pat. That what? is not no. I think that'd be kind of fun. I think I would be a great side nigga because it's like. <laughs> I think I'm because you don't ever want to be in a relationship. You don't ever want to get married. You don't have kids. It's not even so, that. I'm fun. That's why I'm saying you would be a good side dude because I'm you like don't a... want the, you don't want what most people want from a relationship. I'm like an emotional support animal. You know, like them little dogs that be cheering up. A fucking dog. They be cheering up like terminally terminally ill people. Wow. And it's just like a, oh, it's you a ain't dog. Nothing but a. But it's like you know, dog. Dog got to you know. But it's like, while he's there, woo, good times. Good times are rolling. You uh. are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the if the kids made it this far. <laughs> How much time we got? <laughs> they're going to they're gonna love this one. Because um, we're going to get into my thread. Which I hope is, you guys uh, don't hate me after this one. We might have to edit it so that you guys still like me. What, the side chick one? Ooh, they're not going to like that. What? You want to like? I mean, they have. You know, they've been they be, they in, they be in the same exact situations. Yeah, like um, I said, I don't condone it, and I'd never do it again. And that was a long you're time ago. Talking to people in that learned, situation right now, I learned from it. Or non knowingly, um, don't follow that contract. No, <laughs> if you do, he's gonna catch feelings for if you. You a side chick? Follow the contract. No, he's gonna catch feelings for you. I guess that applies for side niggas too. I think that's side a unisex. Be catching feelings that's a too. Si- that's a unisex contract. Yep. All right. Well, let's 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 make it a little bit more PG with this. Kids are not from Earth. Can we talk about kids after we talked about sex dungeons, mm-hmm. BDSM, humiliation, yeah. side chicks? This podcast covers everything. And now know? we're talking about kids. If you're okay with uh, <laughs> you know, covering your your kids' ears for 50 minutes <laughs> <laughs> to get to the good stuff. Okay. Um, this is a good one. But I mean, it's it's not just for kids. I think it's mainly for adults because we never think of it like this. Okay. So this is a viral tweet 
He said this guy made a TikTok saying his niece called an aquarium a water zoo. Hey. And the comments let me know that kids are not from Earth. <laughs> And now these zoo. these kids are like accurately naming all of these things. First of all, a water zoo is absolutely what it is so much better than aquarium. Next, um, someone said, LOL, my daughter calls quesadillas a Spanish grilled cheese. Oh, that's pretty that's that's pretty accurate. Spanish yeah. grilled cheese. Yeah. Uh Shay said, My youngest son would call any pants that weren't shorts. Long sleeve pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they all make That's sense true. to me. You got shorts, which I guess are short sleeve pants. Uh, long sleeve pants, which are, are jeans. And then I guess underwear would be a tank top. A tank top? Like tank top oh. pants. Oh, tank top pants. You know, if you were comparing everything to a shirt. Okay. okay. I mean, it's it's a smart way to break it down. That's what I'm saying. Kids, Kids got it. Uh, all simplified. This is probably my favorite one. My son called an exclamation mark a loud period. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it looks like, though. Yeah, I mean, it is. Damn, my mind was stupid when it... Yeah. A loud period. Hey, nobody wants to have a loud period. Big periods. Nobody wants to have a loud period. period. My daughter didn't know the word for thirsty, so she said she was water hungry. (laughs) 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 <laughs> Damn, I'm water hungry. Oh, I could use a God. bite of water. <laughs> it gets the point across. <laughs> point A to point B. It's just like, oh. Uh, no matter how we get there, we got there. A kid's brain. Mm-hmm. This is great. This is actually my favorite. I, I changed my mind. I forgot to teach my kid what an owl was, which is honestly, let's just stop there. That's a funny statement. I forgot to teach my kid what an owl was. It's like, oh, shit. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> I forgot to teach my kid what an owl was. He called them wood penguins. (laughs) (laughs) Wood penguins? And now, why am I getting, why am I, I'm not even thinking of an owl. I'm thinking of a a penguin sitting on a tree. That's an owl. (laughs) (laughs) It's a fucking owl. (laughs) But it's clever if you don't know what the hell an owl is. Well, this is this is a, this is just beautiful. This came from a two year old, and it's about your favorite place on earth, the graveyard. It said my daughter called the graveyard a people garden. A people garden, that is it's kind of dark sinister. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once you get past the cuteness, you're like, this is dark as hell. We're in a people garden. Two year old, or did the mom come up with that? I have a little skepticism. No, nah, I think that's. That got to be People Garden. That, that got to be a two, two-year-old. though? This one is perfect. This is in the comments. It says, my baby brother used to call pads slash panty liners coochie band-aids. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it is, in <laughs> essence, because These it's soaking sense. up the blood, but... These make sense. Uh, one one person said, a kid called uh, their tears panic water. <laughs> Hey, water is, is 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 some clever shit. Like all these kids is using water as their example. The water ones like, are really good. Yeah, I really like People Garden because just I love how. Uh, uh... <laughs> I didn't see this one. <laughs> Somebody said, and I didn't say this. Somebody said my slow ass ex son. Ex son, like goddamn, it's a lot of information in one. My slow ass ex son said. When he poots, he boo boos air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is advanced. <laughs> these niggas boo boo air. These niggas is deep. That is fucking gross. My son called the parking lot a car waiting area. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is. These are so clever. It's crazy. I love it. When my when I took my wig off in front of my son, oh, no. who was five, he said, "Mom, you have disguised hair." Disguise. Called hair? that nigga a spy. Look. That's your disguise <laughs> hair. Disguise hair. He said, I thought uh, he was gonna say like he was gonna call it a hat because you know how disguise hair is very advanced. Hat hair. When my nephew was <clears throat> six, he tried explaining the ozone. Uh, excuse me. I tried explaining the ozone layer to him. And he goes, so it's like sunblock for the planet. Low key. Low key. Uh, My son used to call the pantry the hot fridge. (laughs) 
That's got to be official. That's, That's gotta pretty be. good. Mm-hmm. Uh, my daughter calls a repass a funeral party. Yeah, because that's exactly what it is. 100%. Why is nobody sad at the repass? I mean, I feel like that's where you, you're not supposed you you hella sad in the funeral, and then it's just like, man, I got I to gotta cheer myself up. Mm, maybe because they drink. Maybe because we getting drunk at repasses. Hey, <laughs> My son used to call a woman's private part a jaguar when he was a toddler. I'm not sure why a vagina sounded like that to him, but I like that. A jaguar? Because, you know, they used to call why? it like, damn, that monkey, that monkey fat. And I always had a, I don't know, something that's yeah, the thing about weird with me. But jaguar? Yeah. Ooh, look at that jag. Look at that jaguar. Jaguar sounds like a, a, older than a cougar, maybe. Or maybe younger than a cougar. Like a young cougar is a jaguar? Yeah. So cougars are what ten years, ten years older. Oh, is that a? I didn't know there was a I rule. Thought, I thought I thought cougars were ten years. Um, My son calls ankles leg wrists. That <laughs> 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 one got you. <laughs> You like leg wrists? <laughs> you fuck with that one. Super heavy. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, God. That's, uh, I mean, uh, my son calls the crease behind the knees leg pits. <laughs> That's genius. Leg pits. Wow. And it doesn't really have a name, so... <laughs> my nephew called my sister's bra uh, chest socks. <laughs> big ass chest socks. <laughs> I just thought about myself with some socks some on chest my socks. <laughs> some, ch- some nice little chest socks. Oh shit! If I put some, can you imagine some socks? Hanging off <laughs> this one is fucking incredible. My daughter used to call regular Cheetos cold Cheetos. Because <laughs> if you know what hot Cheetos are, <laughs> we were alive when hot Cheetos came out. Oh, my but God. But if you were bored when there was both, there was hot and cold. I get that. Oh, wow. Oh. I mean, it makes sense. I, I There was a thread, and then the thread had funny comments. That's why it's taken... Because it's just like, some of these is funny. My daughter referred to the circus as animal slavery. <laughs> oh, shit. That's exactly what it is, though. Damn. That and the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's why them animals be going rogue. Uh, yeah. My little sister used to call collard greens hot salad. Ugh. Right. That sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> when my oldest son was like five, he was trying to tell me that he farted. That he farted, but he just said his booty burped. (laughs) 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 Booty burp! A booty burp! (laughs) Oh my God. Oh my God. That is. Big funny. That was hilarious. <sighs> I'm oh glad. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Yeah, that was very good. I think we both came with some heat today. I think so. It was really good. Well, I think just to follow up that heat, <clears throat> I think we should do two facts each. Okay. Double mint twins. Let's do it. I just went. So you go first. All right. Christopher Columbus never set foot in North America. Columbus was likely not the first European to cross the Atlantic Ocean. That distinction is generally given to the Norse Viking Leif Erikson, who is believed to have landed in present-day Newfoundland around 1000 A.D., almost five centuries before Columbus set sail. Some historians even claim that Ireland's St. Brendan or other Celtic people crossed the Atlantic before Erikson. While the United States commemorates Columbus, even though he never set foot on North American mainland, with parades and a federal holiday, Leif Erikson Day on October 9th receives little fanfare. Nigga, I learned that this year. Ah. My whole life, I thought Christopher Columbus landed in what, Maine or wherever Mm -hmm. the first city was? 
and that was the and but that was the pilgrims. That, that was totally shit. separate. Right. He landed in the Caribbean. Really? Yes. The Native <clears throat> Americans he saw probably had dreads and was like, "Hey, man, oh, like you? <laughs> they look like you." Yeah, he he landed Can you imagine in the Caribbean. If you were there and, and and he pulled up on you. What do you think the conversation would have been like? <laughs> probably would have started with, "This is not India." <laughs> Please stop calling me that. <laughs> What's up, my Indians? Nigga. <laughs> we are in Haiti. <laughs> but oh my God. I did I honestly the misinformation I got about that whole American landing uh baffles me to this day. Yeah, but that's crazy. I so why why do you think he's he was honored? Was it like well, why did sounds, he get the credit? Well, I mean he he well, he didn't find anything, right? But I'm just saying. Yeah. Damn, How did we he were just explained to get the this credit. Is gonna be, this isn't going to be 100 percent accurate, but he was actually one of the people who said that the world was round. Everybody uh-huh. else was a flat earther, so he was saying if he f- sailed west of Europe, he should be able to go around and reach India because they didn't okay. know that North America was there, so they just thought that the next thing was India. So he sailed west thinking that or knowing that the, the the earth was round and he hit the Caribbean and was like, oh, India. But it's crazy because like when no maps, you, you weren't, how the hell were you supposed to know? It says he opened up America to Europe, which was the expansionist power at the time. He was the one who made it possible for them to conquer the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, they didn't know the show, there was shit over here. with them the diseases that apparently wiped out 90% of the population. White people came over here coughing. And everybody over here was just chilling, eating, COVID one. fucking. Huh? COVID-1. COVID zero, <laughs> zero COVID. Yeah, Chris, Christopher Columbus sucks, and 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 every time his name comes up, I learn some new bullshit. Mm-hmm. All right, my facts. My facts today are just they have to deal with drugs and alcohol. What do you want first, drugs or alcohol? Um, since I've never done drugs like that, let me get let me get the let me get the drugs. In the eighteen nineties. Sears, our beloved Sears, they sold cocaine, Mm -hmm. heroin, and opium through its stores and catalogs. And you can see, if you look up Sears Mm -hmm. uh, heroin, there's literally an advertisement. That's probably why they're still in business today. Can you imagine going into Sears and getting a damn polo and some heroin? And they was (laughs) trying to have a time. Okay. Some scented we had candles. A time. That's a crazy thing to have on your the, Sears. The vibes. Receipt. Come on, Sears. Opium, heroin, and the cocaine. You can everybody get, up. Get you a little, a little kilo, as well as what else do you get at Sears? Some Shoes, furniture. <laughs> some goddamn pillowcases. Uh huh. A little so, bit. Well, in the 1890s, I don't know. I mean, shit, you think know. they were making, like, nighttime runs? Like, I have be going, no idea. If they like, were selling that shit, it sounds like they was into... Niggas was partying with powder That was probably wigs, selling like, liquor, too. Is Sears still open? Right. <laughs> Let's go get some more coke. They was probably selling <laughs> drugs, liquor, and, and sex toys. Niggas was making midnight trips to Sears <clears throat> in the middle was, of a house party. Selling the stuff that you want to put in your sex dungeon. Exactly. Like brought oh, to you by Sears. Let's make a quick Sears run. I'm out of opium. Sears out here sponsoring all the sex dungeons. All right, what you got? <sighs> this one's a little lighter. Okay. On a lighter note, in England, to leave a party without saying goodbye is called a French exit. Yep, love that. In France, it's called an English exit. And in the U.S., it's called an Irish goodbye. Oh, that's the one. Okay. <laughs> so why is everybody blaming the I other don't person? Know. <laughs> that must be some propaganda shit. Like right. people in America are like those Irish. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, you can't be trusted. And then in Ireland, they're like those English. Right. That's they just don't like really anybody. Why doesn't anybody like anybody? <sighs> Look, we like everybody. <laughs> no, who's we? Like black people. Who's we? Black, black people, people or like, us two? Hey. No, not us two. Every, black people. Black people. Yeah, black we Americans, like, we... We do be a... Yeah, we fuck with everybody. Yeah, we're accepting, yeah. they, don't, they don't fuck with us. 
Your shit mean as hell. We just be right. the coolest people. <laughs> we just out here dancing, entertaining, right. being doctors and lawyers. Just trying to be doctors. Be, we really be just minding our business. Hey. Like, they don't like us. Niggas is just hate. But hating. as soon as they do, uh, as soon as somebody, an uh, other, does a, we like, ah! Oh, Who was that? You a can dance? go to the cookout. Oh, yeah. yeah. Niggas be dancing with cops in the middle of right. the fucking police brutality movement. Right. They be like, ah. <laughs> Playing basketball with them. Right. Right. They just have a jumper. <laughs> Forget about your news. Right. Um, who just went? I, I just did. went. Oh, okay. Alcohol. You ever you ever you ever blacked out before? Absolutely. All right. Well let's let's get let's eat and <laughs> Eat. Okay. So, alcohol. We should have did that in the mic. That was some pretty good ASMR. ASMR. Mm-hmm. So, next time you black out, remember this. Alcohol doesn't cause you to forget what happened. Mm-mm. Your brain simply stops forming new memories when you've had too much to drink. So, that's crazy. Because when I black out, I mean, I'm functioning. So I'm functioning normal, and I know this because I've looked at my text messages. Right. I've had full-on, hour-long conversations on the text <clears throat> that I do not remember. But And you were fucked up, but you weren't, like, incoherent, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, you were right. fully... Yo, I looked at... I had, a, I had a, a text conversation on my phone. I was fucked up, like, last week. And I was... I don't remember... Most of it, I know I threw up, but I had a text conversation and it was really like, my responses were really like dope. And I'm like, I don't remember any of this. I remember none of it, but the conversation (laughs) was so dope. It was like, the conversation wasn't even dope because I don't think the other person I was talking to wasn't, wasn't drunk, but I was, and I was just like responding the way a sober person would. <clears throat> but I wasn't. Right. And then I went back and read it, and I was like, okay. But the one thing about when I black out, because I blacked out more than I like to admit. <laughs> um, but the only times I blacked out was when I was around people that I really, 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 really right. trust. And it's never really been in public like that. Um, I have flashes so I don't think the brain completely stops making new memories. Yeah. It's like there's flashes. But so. that's what's that's I think the creepiest thing about this fact is like I think we were under the impression that that night happened mm-hmm. like normal, but because of the alcohol, those flashes means I can only remember this part. Mm-hmm. I only remember this part and I only remember this part. But what's crazy about this fact is like I think of uh you know, every brand is like a, a computer, a supercomputer. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's almost like they all this information was written, you drank too much, and it was almost like deleted or corrupted. Right. That's what it seems like. And then there's maybe like some things you can see, and that's that's the flash. But now it's looking like when you've had too much to drink, it stops writing. You right. know what I mean? It's not that it's not that you were normal and it was deleted <clears throat> or corrupted. Your brain stops writing, and that's why we're fully coherent because I've had blackout things blackout nights where I asked you know you wake up horrified and you're like you're asking people like was I good and they're like I didn't even know you were drunk right because your your brain stopped writing so it's like that's so creepy to me because it's like it's almost like right now there's a chance Mm -hmm. that we won't remember right now because Mm -hmm. our brains it's happening but it's not writing it's not recording as opposed to what I thought it was was like if it got to that point, you were like this, you, just slumped in. you know, and then your brain stopped <clears throat> recording everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like, no, you could be time, perfectly like, normal. Yeah, they, my friends have told me like when I don't remember, they like, you, you seem cool, like, you know, and you it's only writing. been, it's only been when I mix. I need to stop that. Yeah, I, mixing. I, I was very, very strict about that, but for some reason, like maybe twice in this last week, I was uh, I mixed, and that's because twice in the week. Well, that's because, and you did this too. Um, <laughs> I switched to rum, right? Because Casamigos is just not it anymore, 
Well, and, yeah, that's that's. But that's the thing. Like rum is so much smoother and so much easier, and Casamigos just sticks with you. But the problem is, is that niggas don't be drinking rum like that. So I would pregame with some rum or be at a house right. with some rum, and then we would go out somewhere, and like, there's hey, can nothing I get some but Captain Morgan. Like and you're like nigga, what? what? It was all it was Casamigos <laughs> or wine, nigga, and they just started giving me shots, and I was like, I am going to regret this, and I did. So I mean. Mixing isn't great. So what did they tell you that you did when you came back? Did you you were just cool? Like you didn't you didn't do nothing crazy? You weren't in what? When you blacked out, when you realized you blacked out. Oh, well this did this time t- I'm talking about when I mixed, I I didn't black. I haven't blacked out in a very long time because oh. I just I just stopped like drinking before that. I I don't want to I don't like that yeah. level of drunk, you know. Um but usually it's fine. You know, there was only one time in particular that I blacked out and people told me I was doing some wild shit. <laughs> um, this was at a, a all deaf party, and this was like when I was, I wasn't an intern, but I was like an office oh, PA so or something like that. Ago. I was like, I was like super, super new. So this is why I really couldn't believe. We used to have just like wild ass parties, and we would we would buy out like bars and just have mm-hmm. open bars and stuff. And this one time, and this was before he really, really blew up. We had Travis Scott. Uh, perform nice, and I got so drunk that um, these are the things that niggas told me. They said they saw me come out of a mosh pit with my shirt off, <laughs> uh, like wiping my mouth. Ooh. I had like a uh, not like that, like, <laughs> not like I was sucking dick not in the mosh pit. Sucking dick in the mosh. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's the most <laughs> hectic spot. To be sucking dick, and then it's also like, what the fuck were you sucking dick for, Patrick? (laughs) No, I think I I think I got punched in the mouth. Oh shit! And I was punching niggas. (laughs) Um, and uh, that's the way to come back from that. I I said some wild shit to this producer, like he was like, you you just in there, and I was just like fucking lit or something. (laughs) And then the CEO of the company introduced me to his wife, and I still had my shirt off, and. the the other producer who was there just told me like I met her and and he was just like Patrick just got hired here and I said I just looked at his wife and I said I'm here to fuck shit up and Whoa. walked away. <laughs> I thought you was about to say I'm here to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> God damn no I still work there. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean you were drunk and you were no, fucking shit up. You punched niggas like, in the mouth. <laughs> that was the wildest thing that I had to hear. But other than that like it was I've only had like fun stories of like. I blacked out once at a Halloween party in college, and I was apparently just walking around with a bottle and a giant bag of Starburst mm. and, like, talking to people and giving out candy and stuff and just, like, talking to a bunch of people. That's fun. Yeah, it's like I've had a— uh... You know what? Actually, my worst blackout story was my 21st birthday. I blacked out oh. at the club, and Mine too. Um, I kept waking up. at. The... I was throwing up in the bathroom, and I kept waking up, and there was different people above me. It would be like my cousin. They're like, get up here. Get out here. Ah. And then it was just like a random nigga rolling a blunt. And he was just like, there's a bunch of bad bitches out there, man. <laughs> and then it would happen again. And it was like the 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 bathroom attendant guy. And he was just like, you okay? And it was just like all these flashes. And like I blew it with the girl I was talking to. Damn. And it was just like a lot of, uh, a lot of debauch. My 21st birthday is the first time I ever drank alcohol. Ooh. And I blacked out. And it was in my dorm. Mm-hmm. We were a dry campus too, but my best friend was Ari. Right. Um, but she she knew what was happening. But she like, when I knew she was coming over, we would hide it, even though she knew it was there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was uh, ooh, Smirnoff. Okay, vodka. That's gross. Uh, <laughs> the dude I was seeing was there. Okay, and. We just drank in the dorm room and <clears throat> have flashes of activity. What you mean? Um, Sexual activity? Yes. But well, it was like, it a, was like, a, a like one orgy. second he was there. No, just he and I. Mm-hmm. I've never been a part of an orgy. Oh, uh, uh, not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. It doesn't appeal to me as an orgy. I think about I don't, I don't. I just, I guess I just don't know. I've probably watched too much porn, and the porn that orgies that I've watched, I've been like, it's almost I the holidays. I don't, I don't want to be a part of that no. if that's what they look Make like. A, a, get you a bowl of eggnog. That's what you should call, that, that's what all orgies should be called during the holidays a bowl of eggnog. Why? 
It does. It's just like a, a bowl of fluids. It's the mixture of all types of fluids. That is not enticing it's at like, all. Come to the come to the bowl of eggnog at my house tonight. Nope. nope. <laughs> um, but I have flashes of him being there <clears throat> and not, and then being there and then not, and then when we talked about it. So when we woke up in the morning, his face was in between my legs. Oh, right. We woke up. Um. And I asked him, I'm like, what happened last night? He was like, you know, every time I kept uh, I kept running out the room, I said, yeah. He was like, I went to go throw up. I said, Ew. and then you came back and ate me out. He gave you them, <laughs> them chunky throw up lips. <laughs> and then he came back. He said he did it like three times. And I was like, what? Yo. Okay, if you threw up <clears throat> once... It should be like, let me lay down for a second. We, Twice, it's like, bro, stop fucking. Right. But we didn't even end up having sex. He fell asleep with his face. It was <laughs> He fell asleep or you fell asleep? We both did. I've but definitely fallen I, asleep eating coochie. And it's 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 not embarrassing because you sleep, but it's like I, you can only imagine the disappointment. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was it was my birthday. We was we was fucked up. I don't remember most of it, so. I just want to end this podcast by saying this. Y'all need to stop putting so much pressure on these end of the night drunk sex things. Because y'all be getting us lit as hell, especially on birthdays, expecting us to just put it down 30 shots in. I think at some point you got to be like, hey, the point of tonight is just getting lit. Let's wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning and handle that. I'm sorry, because Pat. I have to disagree. In each situation that I've been in, it's really been the men that have been like, shots, 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 shots. Either We're way. We're taking shots. We're taking Either way, shots. if it's and a I'm lit like, night. I'm like, yo, you might want to. Cardi B yeah, even yo. said she'd be getting hella lit and then falling asleep. So she was just like, you got to just fuck at the club, which I appreciate her doing it, you know, ahead of time before it gets too crazy. Not but at some point in the like night, that. at some point in the night, you got to realize like, Either I'm going... Y'all the ones buying them, too. Either I'm just going to head straight for sleep when I get home, or we're going to try to have sex and I'm going to fall asleep during sex, Mm -hmm. or my dick ain't going to be into it. (laughs) It could be a number of things. So at some point, you got to be like, yo, because this is... Honestly, this is why I think... But you can't tell niggas nothing. Once you get past a certain point of drinking... Like especially That's why with, we need to with take the pressure people off. who be drinking, like you tell them, like they'll go and get more drink, and you tell them like, "We good, like we don't need no more." And they're like, "Nah, another shot around." Because like, you just you in the fun, you nah, in the fun so part. How like, do you stop it? Forward, forward, forward. But then that's the that's the problem with drinking. It hits you way later. And I heard that that's a specific thing with Casamigos. It hits you way after, whereas mm. rum kind of hits you, you know, uh, more you gradually. But I just think we should stop taking the pressure off because here's why I think. I made it through Hollywood in my 20s without a kid. Let me let me explain. Oh shit. There was a Chinese theater comedy show that All Def put on every Wednesday, open bar sponsored by Ciroc. Uh every all these high level people went there, so you know, it was Baddie Central mm-hmm. and it was in the middle of Hollywood every every Wednesday. And it was just a cesspool. They would, you would watch comedy. Everybody would be drunk. Everybody would be smashing afterwards, right? What? I mean, I assumed. Oh, I'm but like in the room. This like... was no, 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 no. I mean, you know, <laughs> this was this was after you know, it's a comedy show. Okay. So, me being new to Hollywood, I was green, and I was also like new to my career, so I wasn't just about to be just you know thirsty right. at the at the, the. But the biggest thing was Chick Fil A was right down the street. And it closed kind of <clears throat> early. Right. So usually people mingled till like 1 or 2 a.m. Chick-fil-A closed at 12, 12.30. So That's if I had been, I if you know, if there had been drinks earlier than night in the night and I sobered up, uh, I, I would just, everybody would be like, where, where are you going, Pat? I would dip out early just to make sure I caught Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. because that end of the night for me was all about just eating something delicious and getting into my bed and, and enjoying <laughs> sleep. So I'm just saying, if we could just take the pressure off of these lit nights and and the 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 cheek clapping afterwards, sometimes you just have a lit night, then you gather yourself, and then you 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 get you to just... the the cheek clapping. Okay. 
you know? That's I'm here I'm for it. I don't like being falling asleep on. That's what I'm saying. You might as well be, you might as well, as the older you get, you might as well start being honest with yourself. And be like, <laughs> it's a, it's 12 p. It's it's midnight and we still drinking? Don't expect much dick tonight. I, th- I, th- I just think we should be honest with each other. But, um... This you guys asked for longer you, episodes. You guys asked for longer episodes. We read the comments too, so we see we see them all. And you guys episode. asked for longer episodes, so we gave you one. Absolutely, I like this one. Well, I do too. Uh, I, I guess you got a dungeon appointment to go get to. You got a politician that needs no, to I be don't. dog walked. I don't have anything. Don't put that out there. He's <laughs> lying. I'm just kidding. Do you need to go get paddled. No, spadaddled. I told you, I'm not a. I'm not a, I'm not a paddler. Want to get that dank spank? Get the gooch goblin. <laughs> Bring in the gooch goblins. <laughs> Bring in that. I hope they're hungry. Booty water. <laughs> what the heck is say? Booty water. Panic is- water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. As always, I've been your co-host Patrick Cloud, and I'm Persephone. We will see you next week. Bye. Later.